Okay, so now it is time to mark out a rafter. Now the first thing I'm going to do is start down the tail end. So I'm just going to turn my square over. And I'm just going to draw a vertical line down at the bottom end of my rafter where the overhang is. And now all I want to do is measure my overhang. Now most homes in Australia, most residential homes anyway, usually have a 600 overhang. And it just so happens that my square is 600 long, so I can line up my square at the end just there. Now if my overhang happens to be 500 long, then I simply line it up with the 500 mark, or 300, I line it up with the 300 mark, and so on. But for the sake of today, I'm going to make my overhang 600. So I'm going to line up the bottom of my square at that 600 mark. Just there. Just there. And just simply draw a plumb line down at the other end of the square there. So that is where my bird's mouth is going to go. Now the most you can check out of a bird's mouth is a third, so I'm just going to measure down two thirds, put a mark there, and use my square to mark a horizontal line, and there is my bird's mouth cut. And just to make things easier on myself later, I'm going to mark the position of that bird's mouth on my square there. I'll just write BM for bird's mouth. And then later when I'm marking out other rafters, I don't have to measure it again, I can simply use that mark on my square. So that is what I will later cut out for my bird's mouth cut. So in summary I simply mark the bottom end or the overhang of my rafter, turn my square around, use my square to measure my horizontal overhang distance, line it up there and mark that end to position my bird's mouth and then use the horizontal part of my square to mark the seat cut. Now if you remember from the previous video I measured a half span distance across my plate and the measurement I have here on my model is 1150 which means the run of this rafter is 1150. So I just need to measure 1150 horizontally across my rafter and this is where my 500 mil measurement is going to come in handy. I'm simply going to line up 500 at that end, make sure it's nice and accurate and simply draw a line there, that's 500. I'll go another 500 which gives me one meter. Just there, there's a meter and now I just need to go another 150. So I'll just find my tape, there it is. and simply go another 150 past that mark there and that gives me my 1150 run. And that's all it is, you simply step up in 500mm increments and measure the last little bit to get to the run of your rafter. Now we have to mark our deductions. So this is the material I'm going to use for my ridge board. The only reason I'm using this is because it happened to be floating around in the workshop. So I've measured the width of my ridge let me just zoom in there so I can see it a bit clearer. And I'm going to measure square off that run line half the thickness of my ridge board. Being careful to measure at right angles because that is measuring horizontally. And I'll just use my square again to mark the top of that common rafter. And that blue line is what my power saw will actually run through when I cut my rafter. And of course while we're at it, we also need to mark our crown end rafter, which has the same run, but a different deduction. So this is the material I'm using for my rafter. So I'm just going to measure across that and measure half of that thickness. Zoom back in again. Let 
and I'm just going to mark half of that rafter thickness from that same run measurement. And there's half the thickness of the rafter. Let's draw that through. So I'm just going to write on here common and there's my crown end rafter. Now I'm going to mark all of my creeper rafters. Now hopefully you remember from the introductory video that however far apart the creeper rafters are, that's how much shorter each one gets. So my creepers are 450 apart, that's my rafter spacing. So I'm simply going to measure halfway between my 400 and 500 mark. I'm going to measure 50 mil in there. So I've now got a 450 mil mark on my square. I'm just going to square that across. But of course, if you've got a nice new builder's square, you don't need to mark it up because you'll be able to see the measurements already on there. So there's 450. That is my rafter spacing. And I'm going to work from the top down because we start with the top of our common rafter and we're going to mark backwards making sure that we're lining up with the run line we're not lining it up with the deduction these are all center to center measurements so there's one creeper marked and there's my second creeper marked again that's our center line or our run line so now we have to work out the deduction for our creeper rafter. And that's quite easy. So I'm going to use this size material for my hip rafters and the creeper comes into the hip rafter at an angle. So I'm just going to draw a 45 degree line across that piece of timber. And that there represents the center line of my hip rafter. So there's my creeper rafter that's going to come in like that into the hip. So that there is the deduction for my creeper rafter. So I'm just going to measure diagonally across that piece of timber from there to there and divide that in half. Or I can even just measure from the centre line. And that is the deduction for my creeper rafter. So once again, we come square off our run line. You'll notice, however, that I'm marking this line in red pet again, not blue. And the reason is, this line is not the line my power saw is going to run through. This is a centre line again. This is in the middle of my deduction. I've got an angled cut that will go through that. So there's the run line that I marked. And this is my rafter material, and that is going to be centred around that deduction line. So from that deduction line, I'm going to mark half a rafter that way and half that way. Use my square just to mark those two lines. So we now have run, deduction, and half rafter both ways centred around the deduction. And my rafter material sits between those lines like that with the deduction right in the middle of the rafter. So just to repeat, run, deduction, half rafter either side of the deduction. And that's for a creeper. So those two blue lines, I'm going to square them across just to show you how those cuts end up looking. So I've got them squared across now. Just going to join the two diagonals.
So again, there's the length of my rafter, there's deduction, and then I've got half rafter both ways. So that's where my timber sits. With my deduction right in the middle of my rafter. Square them across, join the diagonals, and that's the shape of the top of my creeper rafters. So this line here is my right hand creeper, that's the short point of my right hand creeper with the angle going in that direction, and that's just like the top of this one. That's the shape. Short point going that way. This one is the long point of my left hand creeper, and that's like this one. So when I mark these, I'm going to mark one rafter in line with the long point with the angle going back under that way, and the other rafter will be marked in line with the short point with the angle in the opposite direction. And what you'll end up with is two rafters which are in opposite directions like that, one left hand and one right hand creeper. So to summarise, we've taken a length of timber for our rafter, we've marked the bottom end plumb cut on the overhang, marked the width of our overhang, come down at least two thirds for our bird's mouth cut, used our run or our half span measurement to mark the common rafter, came back half the thickness of the ridge board and then from that same point again half the thickness of the rafter and then from this run measurement here we've come down a rafter spacing and another one and as many rafter spacings as will fit on your piece of timber from our creeper run here, we've come back our creeper deduction, and then we've gone half rafter to the left creeper and half rafter to the right creeper. And that is a basic pattern rafter for your commons, crowns, and creepers.